Gilmore to Andrichuk, shooting, score! Dave Andrichuk hits the fifth mark. Good morning, Maple Leaf fans. Welcome back to another episode of the Leafs Lounge. Back here, as always, with Justin Kudo. Justin, the uh, regular season has finally come to an end for the yeah. Maple Leafs. Obviously, one more day for a few teams. But, yeah, how you feeling? Wrapped up this season. Obviously, our boy Matthews fell one goal short. But how you feeling now that we're uh, moving on to playoffs? Yeah, I mean, about damn time, honestly. I'm just happy it's done. It's <laughs> yeah. been a it's been a rough last week and a half. And I you could see it on the a lot of the leaves, like they're just kind of done with it. Yeah. It, it's hard when your matchup's been set in stone for so long, where it's like you're not you're not gonna be able to move up or down in, in the standings. Like you just have to play and it sucks. But yeah, you know, yeah, Matthews unfortunately couldn't get 70 and you know it's not for a lack of trying i saw last night he had 12 no. shots on goal so but yeah. for me personally just looking forward to playoffs starting saturday and then mm -hmm. it'll be great it's the it's best here. time of the season is first first round of playoffs yeah absolutely so pumped for it it really has felt like a long season as you kind of called out it's like yeah they were still figuring out if we were going to play bruins or florida but kind of felt we were locked into that three for the last couple of weeks. So it really, yeah, there wasn't much kind of suspense or any kind of, uh, okay, if they can pull out a few wins here, that could mean we have a more favorable matchup or something or get home ice. We were kind of locked in. So yeah, it's good to have it over. Um, I, I don't know in terms of like the Austin Matthews, obviously it would have been nice. You kind of heard the, um, I don't know if you caught his media availability. You can tell that he was kind of bummed out a little bit. Yeah. Obviously did the typical, yeah, you know, it's not the most important thing. Uh, the team kind of goals are obviously more concerning and more pressing for us at all those typical things you would expect from any hockey player. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of un unfortunate. Like, I don't know if you, like, obviously can't really blame anybody. As you said, he had all those shot attempts. I mean, you know, could Sheldon Keefe have maybe given him a better opportunity over the last couple games? Like, he didn't play Riley or McCabe last night. Would that have made a difference? I don't know, but didn't have a great lineup out there. Obviously, Domi was hurt, so unfortunately he wouldn't have been available anyways, but you feel there's any blame to be put around or if it's just like, yeah, he had all the attempts you could ask for and you give him 12 shots and one more game, he probably scores two or three. Like it just kind of bad. Yeah. Pop, I mean, right? it's not for a lack of trying and Keith put him out there in every situation, I guess. Yeah. Going back what two weeks ago now, that empty netter that he could have stole against the caps. That was, that was the difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and like, like Brody, like, dude, he hasn't scored a goal in over a hundred games and he takes that clapper and all of a sudden he's making a case for a uh, power play quarterback instead of trying to find a way to get the puck to Matthews. Like it was just so leafy how it happened last night. Matthews gets all the attempts you could ask for and who scores goals, Holmberg, Brody and Revo, you know, yeah. like, come on. And obviously JT got one too, but yeah. That's secondary Funny stuff. scoring showing up. Yeah. <laughs> showing up for the last game of the regular season. Hopefully that continues. Yeah. I mean, all right. I I think it it's um just about time we flip the page over to playoffs. I mean, I'm kind of mm -hmm. done with the regular season, so we can move on. Yeah, for sure. So on that note, the NHL playoff race, we'll get to our picks, kind of go through what the current bracket setup is currently. We know there's still a, uh, you know, between Vegas and L.A. playing tonight, there still could be some uh, flip-flopping as far as the 2-3 matchup there. East is all locked in, so we can obviously talk through those games. Um, we know that Washington's in now, so everything is kind of, we got clarity there. So we're getting to our predictions in a little bit. Um, perhaps just some kind of uh, 
notes from last night with guys like Noah Gregor, Nick Robertson, Timmins, Geo, Brody being put into the lineup or in Robertson's case, kept in the lineup. Did any of them show you anything? I mean, maybe some of those guys um, already have a spot locked up, whether you're Nick Robertson, maybe he already has a spot in your mind locked up. But any of those other guys, did they kind of no. convince you they should have a look or did we yeah. see? The, all, the only way, the only way, way, the only way Noah Gregor was going to convince me he should be a game one player is if he scored like five goals last night. There was, yeah. There, He's so <laughs> low on my depth chart. Like, I'm pretty sure I'd have Fair. Alex Steves over him right now. It's He's so low. So Yeah. He's just really like a north-south guy, like just does cardio the whole game. He's not doing anything out there. Yeah. And as for the defense, I feel like most of them are just competing to be the first man up off yeah, the bench. Feels that way. Uh, out of the stands, I feel like Keith has his six. And do you feel that includes Brody or does not right now? Hmm. I, I, I know what's going on in your head right now. You're like, well, that was a pretty nice shot he scored on last night. Maybe, I, did, I did see the maybe. highlight of it. So it, it was <laughs> nice. It was yeah. nice. but Perfectly placed clapper. <laughs> I also I also saw how many times like he's a – out there for a goal and it's I don't know I don't think that he should be in for game one yeah same for me but it's a question of who who's coming out then yeah I mean I I think for us you like only... we think about this all the time where we're stuck on this like we know Brody has to play but is he one of our six best six D I don't think so well, I think for me, the only reason we're even contemplating it is because of Keith. Like, yeah. I think anyone who's watched the blue line, all the guys between like the, the entire depth chart, even guys like Geo, Timmins, the whole group, I don't think there's anyone that has a different top six right now than Riley Labushkin, Benoit McCabe, Edmondson, and Timothy Lilligrick. Like, those feel like they're our top six. I don't think you can make a case for Geo and Timmins. And it feels like Brody is only in there if Sheldon Keefe just keeps going back to old habits and thinking he's Mr. Reliable. But based on everything that we've seen, eyeball test, uh, the stats, how many times, as you said, he's on the ice for a goal against, he doesn't deserve to be in there. But I think it's a topic of conversation because Keefe might still do it. Yeah, and it sounds like since McMahon is probably going to miss yeah. some time in the first round, that just kind of secures Nick Robertson's spot, at least could be at the beginning of the series. I don't know how it looks going forward. And once yeah. McMahon comes back or Yarncrook comes back, what happens then? But mm -hmm. at least in game one, I do think Nick Robertson has a lock on his spot. At this time. How about if uh, Yarn Croak's available? Because I'm hearing he could be a possibility. Are you really going to throw him in first game back in two months? In first game one, first round? I don't know. I'm not sure I would, um, depending on the injury. Like, I mean, it, it sounds like he broke a bone in his hand, finger, or whatever. So they say the recovery timeline is kind of exactly where he is right now. So it's not like he's ahead of schedule. He's kind of on track. Um, if he's 100%, I feel Sheldon Keefe will put him in if it okay. came down to Nick Robertson or Yarncroke. But I'm kind of with you. Unless you know that, you know, he could have played in the games this week. They just kind of yeah, held him out as a precaution. And he's actually 100% healthy. Then, yeah, I could see Yarncroke. It, it would have been it would have been really nice if he got the chance to play in one of these last yeah. two. Then you For could sure. see how he's feeling in actual game action. Yeah. Because you can't. You can't simulate that in a practice, right? So No, no. And it's tough throwing him in there. I mean, what line do you break up to throw him in there? You kind of, not that you have like four lines that have been solidified for a while as far as establishing chemistry, but you probably don't want to take the chance and assume Yarncrow can play 12 to 15 minutes for you and be on one of your top PK pairings without having seen anything in actual game action, right? So... 
it's going to be a tough call. We'll see how the practices uh, shape up over the next couple of days, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody right now just focus on getting healthy, getting that rest. And when time comes Saturday at eight o'clock prime time, you're just ready to go. And the boys are got to be ready to go from puck drop because you know, the Bruins will be so. Oh yeah. Yeah. That 8 PM puck drop is kind of going to make it an absolute grind Saturday, just a long day waiting for an 8 PM puck drop. Um, I don't know if there's going to be enough uh, drinks in my fridge to keep me uh, from having full anxiety. We got, we got <laughs> to be uh, on tilt the whole day. We got Islanders canes at five o'clock though. That's, that's a snooze fest, a pregame nap for yourself. I, I was totally going to say that exactly. Yeah. If I want to get like a pregame nap, I'll turn uh, that game on. Oof. I dare take the under, take the under. Yeah, in every game in that series, like that, I remember. I remember from last season that was a an absolute grind. I think I watched maybe their overtime, and that was it. Yeah, like, well, maybe yeah, one. Definitely see a couple game. times in that series. It's... An overtime game with a one nothing final. Yeah. <laughs> in quadruple overtime. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be a shit a shit show. Yeah, I think so. So I think I don't know if there's anything other. Um, oh, before we go on to our playoff predictions, I guess staying on the uh, Leaf potential lineup predictions, from a goaltending standpoint, when we talked on Tuesday, I kind of felt if Jones got the nod last night as he did, that meant they were pretty uh, you know, definitive with Samsonov playing in game one. Yeah. So I still feel that way. I don't think there's yeah. any doubt he's playing in game one. You're obviously of the same mindset. Yeah, I, goes, I remember yeah. I told you the other day, I said, if it's if we're facing Boston in the first round, I think it's Sammy's getting the start just based off of how Wool played in those two games in March where he allowed yeah. four goals in both, didn't look amazing. I mm-hmm. feel like it kind of solidified Sammy's stance as the number one against Boston. Yeah, and- I don't know how convinced I am that it would have made a difference if he played Florida, though. I, I, I think they made up their mind Samsonov was their guy regardless of the matchup, but yeah. I don't know. I think there's something to say about a goalie just having another team's number. I thought if yeah. I thought Wool from what I did see on Tuesday, I thought he he played pretty well. That second period was atrocious. I think they had the 30 shots. Mm-hmm. And so he was facing a full on assault and he you know yeah. he, he bent but didn't break completely. So exactly. Yeah, like he wasn't terrific, but Samsonov definitely wasn't terrific in his previous two games. So, I mean, it felt like it, you know, warranted it being a competition heading into the yeah. final two games. But I do get it from the standpoint of the team that they just felt Samsonov had shown more over the last month and a bit that they felt more confident with him. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit uneasy about it, but I guess – uh I, I he think he gets a 30 safe shutout on Saturday. I'll, I'll definitely. Be, I think come it'll around. be a short leash going for Sam. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he has another first period like he did against the Red Wings last Saturday, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Last Saturday, then he would be done for not only the game, but he wouldn't play game two. I agree. I agree. And I think you have to do that. I mean, obviously, it's different in the regular season. Games and points are meaningless, especially for this team the past few weeks. But yeah, in a, you know, first to four playoff series, you can't afford to say, oh, okay, well, maybe Samsonov will bounce back in game two. Yeah, perhaps he will. But if he doesn't, series is pretty much over. If he has two horrible games, Obviously, there'd still be a chance, but um, yeah, I think they got to have a short leash because of that. So yeah, so before we get into the playoff prediction, just a reminder uh, for those tuning in, if you did have any question or wanted to make a comment, um, definitely type something in in the comment box here, and we can bring you on if you want to ask a question live in the studio here. We can send you the link and bring you on through. Reminder that if you're looking for any past episodes, you can find us on the Chilltown Hoops uh, YouTube page, as well as Sports Fluent, Twitter, X, I guess, and Facebook. So you can find us there as well. All right. So that being said, should we uh, get going on the playoff predictions? I know you're excited about it. 
Yeah, I'm definitely excited. Where do you want to start? Uh, yeah, so why don't you tee us up? Why don't we go with the uh, Eastern Conference first because we actually know the matchup. So that would be the easier one to make our prediction. So well, throw I guess me your bracket start, first, I guess. Let's start. Well, I, th- I think we go maybe series by series. Mm-hmm. So I like it. I guess start with right. Florida, the one seed versus Tampa. So, mm-hmm. or I guess Florida is technically the two seed in the East. We're two versus seven. Right. Yep. Florida versus Tampa. I think it's the all. I'm going Lightning in the series. Whoa. Okay. That battle of okay. Florida rivalry. I remember from a couple years ago when they faced in the playoffs. It was a super entertaining series. Those teams definitely don't like one another. No, looking and forward to that one. A lot of skill, a lot of grit on both teams. It's going to be a battle grind. Yep. I have Tampa and seven. Nice. I don't okay. believe in home ice in, in Florida, Battle of Florida series. I feel like there will be fans. Probably in won't make too much of a difference, maybe yeah. from a matchup standpoint. That's about it. But I don't think it's going to matter too much. Yeah, I think it's going at least six games. I think it will be close. But I've got Florida in... Six games. Really? Six games. Yeah. I, I think, think it's going to be a factor for me is just playoff Vaz. Playoff Braden but Point. Have we seen playoff Vaz Silevsky in the last year, two years? Like we didn't see well, him against Toronto had, last year. The Leafs had his number. Let's not let's not discredit the, the buds here. I think uh our <laughs> sure, but it's not like Vasilevsky. I mean, I know he was coming off an injury, but his numbers were fantastic this year. He had a good run, um, but that was not Vasilevsky from like two or yeah, two, three years ago, even. So I don't know. Like, I get it. You might, we might find that Vasilevsky shows up again, but I just think it's been a long time since we've actually seen it to expect that he's going to. I mean, I'm not saying he won't steal one, two games, maybe. I don't know if he's going to steal an entire series for them against Florida. No, that's. That's super fair. I, I think that Vasilevsky is kind of in the same spot as, well, well, I think I'm just basing it off of pedigree. Like this season, he's totally. around 900 save percentage on the year. Yeah. Not great, especially for no, a guy his standard or his quality. But yeah. his pedigree in playoffs, like how many, what was it, shutout in four straight closeout games in a series? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I forget how many it was, but yeah, he was he was crazy good. And look, I don't think he's that far off from maybe getting back to that level. But, you know, he's also not playing on a team that is as good defensively as those cup-winning Tampa Bay Lightning uh, were at that time. Like, this is a team that was uh, bottom 10 in goals allowed. Um, they're not the same team defensively. Um, I don't think they have the same forward depth. So I just don't see them as being as difficult of an out as maybe they were um, in past years. But I do think that Vasilevsky is definitely the X factor if Tampa Bay was to uh, advance for sure. And I think of it like this. Everybody, especially in Toronto media, loves John Cooper. They think John Cooper is the second coming of, like, I don't know. Scotty Bowman? Scotty Bowman, yeah. 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 <laughs> like you think John Cooper is the best coach in the league, the way we talk about him. So, you know I mean he, he he deserves to be in the argument. I mean, I definitely think he's top five for sure, maybe even oh, top I, I, three. I, I, I agree. I think he's a great coach. Yeah. I think that that's another area where Tampa will have an edge over Paul Maurice, too. He's got that leaf curse a little over top of him still. You can't, you can't fully get rid of that. Yeah, the only one Paul Maurice maybe has the edge over, I guess, is uh, Sheldon Keefe, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we've got that series. How about we hold off on the Leaf Bruins prediction? We'll save that for the last one in the East. So let's go over to uh, Islanders and Carolina. Who you got? It's going to be a rough watch. <laughs> you have to pick one. You got to pick rough... one. I, I w- <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really tempted to say Canes will just sweep it. I want that series to be done as fast as possible. But oh, so I know you're hoping Islanders, it's over early. <laughs> I know the Islanders, they're gonna they're gonna steal a game or two. So I have I have Canes in in six. I don't want it to go six, but 
I feel like the, the Canes will give up an overtime game or two. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely got the Canes. I'd probably um, – yeah, I'd probably give the Isles two wins. Somehow, some way, I'm not sure if they're going to have Varlamov or Sorokin. They've kind of yeah. been flip-flopping a little bit. But I think either one of those two guys gives them the goaltending edge um, over our uh, buddy Freddie, if they do end up going with him. But yeah, I think Carolina just looks like, for me anyways, probably the most complete team in the conference right now. So I, I definitely really, have Carolina advancing. I, I think they're really good. I, I think... I, I remember telling you before the trade deadline, I said, I think they can't go far because they don't have that star power. They don't have that offense. They always lose in playoff series because they don't score enough goals. Then they go out yep. and get 40 goal score Jake Gensel. And I'm like, damn, he looks amazing. In and Kuzi. Kuzi. You keep forgetting yeah. Kuzi. I'm not bringing up Kuzi. <laughs> you love him. I, I know you love Kuzi. I know. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. there. And Seth Jarvis, <laughs> thirty goal score. Natchez, thirty goal score. Like Great they player. have, they have a lot of quality guys there that I like, and I like Jordan Stahl as a captain. So, well, in that blue line, you know, like they 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 have what five blue liners? They would probably be our like a number one on the Leaf defense. They're yeah, I I, I think line. a lot of people. I, I I think a lot of people like uh, Brett Pesci. Uh, Brady Shea is really good. I like him. Jacob Slavin, Brent Slavin, Burns. Obviously. Well, I, it's Burns would not be our number one. He's a he's an older version of Riley. Let's be honest. What? Burnsy, an older version of Riley? He he'd be on our top pair. Hundred percent, he'd be on our top pair. If you want to, if you like Riley over him, I could get behind that. But he's not. He's not. He wouldn't not play over Lebron right now. A Morgan Riley Brent Burns pairing would would get Toronto media in there. Like, they'd be so mad. They'd be so mad. <laughs> There's not enough defense there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Brent Burns is definitely not uh, like a stalwart defensively, but I just think his overall game, what he could bring yeah. offensively he can bring a little bit of a physical edge. I think he's still, you know, maybe not a high end top pairing guy if he was on Toronto, but. I think he'd still find his way in the top pair. Okay, so we're both on Carolina, six games. Let's go to, um, yeah, the Rangers and Washington. Who do you yeah, like? We, we both we both talked, and I we both said that the Caps will steal a game. Like, you know it's going to yeah. happen. I have Rangers in five. I don't think it'll be too much of a threat to the Rangers to face the Capitals. I don't think we're going to see another miracle – a Florida type run, right? From the team that just squeaks in, like I don't think so. The Capitals are probably. I think I don't know what the actual stat is, but they definitely have one of the worst goal differentials of playoff teams in recent history. Yeah, so like yeah. something like a uh, minus forty-five. So yeah, like, I think we uh, recognize they don't deserve to be in there, but just a matter of yeah, it comes to playoff hockey. I think almost any team that's in the uh, dance right now has a chance to yeah, win course. a game, two games. So that's my only reason to feel confident that Washington can even take one game. I actually think they could take two. I've got uh, Rangers in six games there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Ovi's not, he's not done yet. Ovi wants, he's going to, he's going to will his team and him and Lindgren, they're going to will the team to at least a win. They're gonna go out. I don't think it'll be a blowout so. series. I think it'll be no a gentleman's sweep. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. All right. So we've been trying to put it off uh, for as long as possible, but there's only one more series in the Eastern Conference to cover here: the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins. You want to go first? No, you can go first. Okay. Um, obviously there's going to be an element of, uh, bias here and, you know, uh, drinking the Kool-Aid blind faith, Is whatever it? you want to characterize it as, <laughs> <laughs> but I've got Toronto and I'm going to say they get it done in six games. I do. Ooh. I think they're close it out at home and I'll let you give your prediction and then maybe we can talk about, uh, we're doing a little bit more in-depth handicapping of the series. I like I like Toronto in six. I think that every time we face the Bruins, I feel like every time we're up three two with a chance to close it out on home ice, 
and then something happens and we fall apart and then lose in seven. I think things change this year. We close it out in seven in Boston. Or seven now. Okay. I think you it'll gave be Boston an extra seven. game. In Boston, we're gonna we're gonna slay all the dragons. The demons oh. are gonna be gone, and it's gonna be a start of something legendary this summer. Well, yeah, I think if you gave Leaf fans the choice, like in terms of if you had your optimal way for the Leafs to win the series, absolutely, it would be Game Seven in Boston, and we just put our foot on their throat and My, stomp all over them in their home arena. I that don't would know. be My, the ideal. The absolute. It won't happen that way, way though. There's two there's two ways actually. The yeah. best two ways is one just sweep them. That won't happen. That would be nice too. That would but be okay. <laughs> the other way would be we like we come back from down 4-1 in the third period in game 7 where they Ooh. think that they have it and we win in overtime. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be crazy theater. So kind of like a little bit of the Tampa Bay series last year where we were kind of trailing in a couple games found our way back, won in overtime. That would be yeah, I was thinking. Cool I was life. thinking exact replica of 2013 just flipped. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that would be the so, most heartbreaking. So turn all Marker Swayman into James Reimer? Is that kind of hey, uh, yeah, yeah, where yeah. you're at? Optimus well, Rhymes in his we, prime? We, Come on. We can't have any James Reimer hate, huh? I didn't realize that. No. no. <laughs> we're, we're James Reimer supporters here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, so I think where I'm coming from in terms of the Leaf prediction, as opposed to just kind of leaving at, leaving it as, a, yeah, we're Leaf fans, so of course we're going to think the Leafs are going to win. My kind of uh, logic, if there is any, is when I look at the matchup on paper, I give the Bruins a big edge in goaltending. I give them an edge in blue line. I think the Leafs have a better top-to-bottom forward group. And yep. just looking at Boston in the second half, they haven't really – they their power play has been awful. They yep. haven't been scoring a lot of goals. Um, I think if the Leafs can kind of shore up their defense and if they can get not even elite goaltending, just good enough goaltending, I feel that's the Leafs' ticket to winning. I feel they can outscore the Bruins as long as the goaltending holds up and they don't have the typical – Toronto Maple Leaf turnovers and miscues that they've often had in playoff games. If they can avoid that and play a clean game, I just don't see how, you know, and I'm thinking about in terms of Sheldon Keefe, how he's going to like come up with the right coaching game plan. The mm -hmm. only guys, there's, there's only a small handful of Bruins players that I'm afraid could beat us. If you can figure out a way to make sure that Pasternak doesn't absolutely crush you in this series you deserve to get fired as sheldon key find a way no, like, find find those players who can make poster not, not kill you because if you can neutralize him i think you win, win the series yeah and i i think that's super fair i think poster is a, one of the best players in the league he's so talented sure. great shot has that ability to carry his own line, like all of that stuff. I do believe that. Absolutely. I think the Leafs, on paper, have a monstrous edge on in forward talent. I'm taking a look at this Bruins talent, lineup yeah. right now, and you're you take a look at the Bruins lineup, and it's almost laughable, right? And I I mean no disrespect, but they're, they're maybe a little bit, is, maybe a little bit. Their center group it is should should not hold a candle to the Leafs. In theory, agreed. In theory, but, yes, and yeah. and I think that for all the the laughs, I think a lot did come from beating Tampa last year. I think a lot of mm -hmm. confidence in the team's ability to get things done in the playoffs came from winning a series. And I know it was only one, and then they got bounced in five. Sure. But I think there's a yeah. lot to say about the confidence that came from beating Tampa, a team that nobody yeah. really thought they could, and they did. And I think that yeah. no matter what, if they, if they faced the Boston or they faced Florida, they were going to be underdogs. And I think the Leafs have to take that and just be and run with it, be the underdogs. Yeah, yeah, because like I do think, and that's where we were kind of talking about our playoff lineup on Tuesday. 
that's where I kind of like, you know, you got to have the mentality that if we try to, if we match our best players against their best players, we should win that matchup. So the idea of kind of having Nylander on the third line with either Holmberg and Robertson or Nyes, I'm kind of coming off that more because of the matchup with the Bruins. I feel if we can get, we got to get Nylander going. Because yeah. as we talked about, you know, he's been pretty brutal for the last uh, handful of games here. And there just seems to be something missing from him. And I think there's a lot of uh, concern over, you know, how engaged he is in a lot of games. But I think a way to make sure he's going in the playoffs is getting him with Marner and JT. And yeah. then if you have those top two lines, I, I would hope that that's enough to kind of tilt the ice. And then you come back with whether it's an energy line, if McMahon's available, or if it's Yarncroke instead, like a nice Holmberg Yarncroke, nice Dewar Yarncroke. And then I think you just kind of, again, you hope that five on five, the Matthews, Burt, Domi line, the Marner, JT, Nylander line is enough to tilt the ice. And if you can't get it done with those guys, those six, Mm -hmm. then yeah i think you kind of just say okay it was never going to happen but i'd rather at least them put out that lineup because i think that gives them their best shot yeah i i completely agree i think that at five on five the leafs will have to be quite dominant i yeah. don't have a ton of faith in our special teams heading into the playoffs i think no. that our power play has been up and Shit. down to say to put it kindly, they've been up and yeah. down, and their our penalty kill has been garbage. Yep. I mean, yep. I don't have a ton of faith in it, and I think that the Leafs are going to be in for a rude awakening in the first game. If, mm -hmm. as at all kind of first round series start, it's a shit ton of penalties. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of power plays. There's going to be a lot of penalty kills, as it always is in a game one, right? Yeah. And the Leafs have uh, to. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, no, I, I was agreeing. I was just going to say, yeah. like, what we've seen from the Leafs in the past is, like, even though they haven't had the most physical players, they always seem to get these, like, soft calls on them where it's whether oh, it's a yarn stroke or a camp or a Nylander. Like, they're just getting pinned in the defensive zone and someone's tired and needs to kind of get off the ice but instead they do a little hook or get their stick caught up in the guy's skates and they get a tripping call that they have to find a way to avoid that and i think part of doing that and what would go a long way is yeah having those two dominant or in theory dominant lines that will at least kind of drive possession where you don't have to worry about chasing the bruins around in the offensive zone um because yeah i think that's going to get them into trouble because this penalty kill even though the Bruins' power play hasn't looked good lately, this penalty kill the Leafs Leafs, have, it always does, exactly. This Leafs penalty kill ain't stopping a cold. So, no. I mean, they no. have to find a way to limit how many power play opportunities Boston gets, and they probably won't get too many, although the Bruins, um, like, I, I think they kind of are middle of the pack in terms of penalties taken, if I'm not mistaken, but the Leafs are going to have to capitalize on a lot of those chances because obviously Bruins have shown that they're a really good five-on-five -five team and the Leafs have to maintain possession and try to control as much of that uh, ice as they can. Yeah, and I, I think the Bruins have not played good hockey for a while now. Nope. Since February 1st, they are 17th in the league. They have 38 points. They're 16-11-6 since, since February 1st. Whereas yeah. Leafs are 21, 12, and 2, which is good for seventh in the league. Yep. Right? It's they haven't, they're not playing their best hockey right now. And the Leafs have, prior to this four game losing streak to end the season, have yeah. played largely their best hockey here at the end of the season. For sure. For right. Sure. So and, I and, do feel like yeah. even with the power play as bad as it has been and the penalty kill struggling as it has been, the Leafs are still finding ways to win. And yep. that's what they'll need to do come game one, game two, so on. For sure. And yeah, I think to that point, like I don't think the Bruins are all that good. 
Like, I get it. You can't argue with kind of the year they've had. They've obviously done enough to be, you know, where they were. They were pretty much first place in the division up until the last couple of games. So, I mean, give them credit. They're a well-coached team, great goaltending. It's not going to be easy. I don't think anyone would uh, suggest that. But I'm as this matchup was confirmed, I kind of started feeling a lot better about the Bruins being the more favorable matchup over Florida. And I just think that the Bruins, I think we, despite what happened in the season series where we obviously lost all four games to them, I don't think all that, I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. And I just, maybe I don't give the Bruins enough credit, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're an unbeatable team. Like you kind of are hearing from some people that, you know, Bruins are in the Leafs heads. They have no chance. I just don't see it that way. Yeah. I mean, it looks like we've lost seven straight games to the Bruins going back to last season. Not um, ideal. Can I, change, can I change my prediction? I didn't know. Not, not ideal, but a couple of those were, three of those were overtime or shootout losses. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I, okay. I I don't think that matters much. I think. No, it the, shouldn't. At the end of the day, the the schedule resets your record resets come playoff time. I remember when we faced the Habs all like in the bubble series, like we destroyed them every time we faced them in the regular season and it didn't matter come playoff time. Right. Clearly not. I mean, it makes it until game five, jackets, until game faced, five. Yeah. When we faced the blue jackets, we destroyed them the entire season and then they didn't matter. Yeah. Come playing, you know? Yeah. So yeah. The, um, before we move on to the Western Conference, want to kind of get uh, maybe your take. You don't obviously have to talk about every single player for the sake of time. I don't think we're we'll get into that. But in terms of players that I think what I like about the Leafs chances, there's far fewer players on this team right now. And we're assuming the all these guys are going to be available, healthy, and that Keith makes the generally the right lineup moves. But the players that I don't worry about in terms of what they're going to bring to these games coming up in the playoffs. For me, it would be Matthews, Tavares, Bertuzzi, Domi, Nyes, McMahon, Revo, Dewar, Benoit, McCabe, Riley, Edmondson. Now, all of these are like, for me, relative to expectations. So it's not to say all of these guys are going to be our top, whatever it was, eight or nine guys. But relative to expectations and what you need them to do to fulfill their role, that's a long list for me. That's basically more than half the roster pretty much. With two notable names you're letting off the list. Right. So that's where I'll get to now. The guys I do worry about relative to expectations, Marner, Nylander, Samsonov, Lilligren, Robertson if he's in, Holmberg, Camp, Yarncroke, and Labushkin. In terms I, of what I think, I think that Holmberg. I don't know why you you're doubting Holmberg. I don't. I don't think he's done anything to prove that he can't be a playoff player. I think that he just he just strikes me as that kind of guy. Fair, but I think it depends on the role and maybe wh- who he's playing with. Like sure, if they end sure, up sure. having Nylander on the third line, and that's kind of where my head was at. If Nylander is playing with Holmberg and Robertson, that's where I'm like. Yeah, I just worry about what that third line will do if they find themselves out against Jake DeBrusque or Pasternak or Brad Marchand. So it's all about relative to expectations and where they're going to be playing. That's the thing. With the Bruins, there's not exactly that one like stacked line because they do separate Marchand and Pasternak. They don't have that one stacked line where it's like, oh man, if our third line is stuck out against them, like we're in trouble. Shouldn't be. I agree. I agree. Like their top line, Heinen, Zaka, Pasternak. I would, I would trust Holmberg in a defensive role against that line, at least to see how it yeah. goes. Not, not with Nylander on the wing. No, but right. I could yeah. see like Holmberg as a defensive centerman. I could see him playing well and excelling in something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, more I obviously 
as the road team, going to be tough to dictate uh, who you put yeah, up exactly. against that top line. But I, but I wouldn't, more I wouldn't exactly with Dewar, be, Yarn Croak, McMahon. I wouldn't exactly be like really upset if I was Keith if they put throughout the Pasternak line while Holmberg was out there as an attempt to match a punt. Like I wouldn't be. No, and I think, yeah, I totally agree. I think going back to what I was saying earlier, I don't think the Bruins, in terms of their offensive tack and the uh, individuals they have on that forward group, yeah, you're not going more than three or four names long before you start saying, yeah, I don't think that guy is going to do much. I'm not worried about what he's capable of. But yeah, I mean, obviously you would have that kind of uh, thought on the Bruins the entire year where you're like, how are, how's this team finding ways to win games? Cool and, and they do for sure. That's probably the biggest part of it. And, and I think you know, that's going to be one thing. I'm going to say it. All Mark is not a playoff goalie. I'm just going to come out and say it. he's, he's not, he hasn't proven it yet for he's sure. Not. Yeah. And Swayman hasn't proven to be any playoff goalie either. So I feel like and argue that. We're we're in, they're not in a much different situation than the Leafs. Sure, they have a better regular season track record than Samsonov and Wool do, but right. Do they exactly have anybody that's I don't think Allmark or Swayman have won a playoff series. At least Samsonov's won one. Maybe yeah, Bruin, maybe uh, they have, maybe Swayman has. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. I, what I happened two years ago? I think they yeah, did win. Good one. question. I think Swayman did take over. I don't think Allmark did, but yeah, it was Swayman or Allmark, they definitely won a series. But uh, yeah, to your point, it's not like either of these two guys are like uh, you know. It's not like we're facing Connor Vasilevsky, Hellman. peak Vasilevsky, and you have to peak uh, Dominic Hassett coming in against uh, the Maple Leafs, where it's like, how are we gonna you know get past this goalie? I don't think it's a situation like that. Allmark is just... three and five in the playoffs in his career. Yeah, because the Bruins last got out of the first round in 2021. And they beat uh, the Capitals. Uh, just trying to see quickly. Uh, and Swayman is goal. three and four in the playoffs. So combined, they're six and nine. Okay. Yeah, so I think it's very fair like to not be... Uh, Definitely not terrified of the goaltending advantage, but, you know, at least on paper, we would have to think that uh, goaltending will make it a little bit more difficult. And just the way the Bruins play as a team, defensive, they definitely have a lot more guys bought in to playing the right way, game sure. details, all those things that, you know, Lee fans would like to pretend don't make a difference, but it's those things that have had us have, way too many early exits to even uh talk about right now it's I, those details those turnovers that always come back to bite us bruins don't make them as often the leaves tend to and right? i one thing one thing i you don't hear a lot about and this is what i really like going into the playoffs is you're not hearing a lot of people complain that the leafs lack tough toughness they're not, not tough anymore enough. You're not going to hear any people saying that Leafs are going to get bullied or anything like that. Even no. in their loss against Florida on Tuesday, I saw they were, they were just really feisty. They were getting all the scrums. That didn't matter yep. who was involved. I saw McCabe was just punching and Edmonton was just punching Kachuk in the face after the whistle. So it doesn't matter. It's just setting that. If the only guy who thing, didn't, only guy who did not, I don't know if you saw that. Did, do you know who I'm talking about? Who? The guy who didn't uh, react to anything. So uh, 88 um, did a little bit. Of, I don't think he could have jumped off the ice quicker. Uh, Kitschuk, he got, Kitschuk pushed Nylander in the Florida game. Nylander got shoved. And then Kitschuk went after Tavares. Yeah, that's what, that, Tavares that's what I Right down to the ice. And Ny Nylander kind of looked and he's like, yeah, I don't want any part of this. And jumped over the boards. <laughs> I did not like that. And then Benoit like ben came in off the top rope and <laughs> started doing some. Yeah, I think Benoit was there. Nyes flew in. I think he came from the rafters. I don't know where Nyes yeah. came from. But uh, everyone but Nylander, pretty much. I mean, but anyways. I, of course, you would love to see everybody get in the scrum. Like, as someone myself who wouldn't be afraid to get into this, any scrum, 
Right. Like, I don't see why you wouldn't, but there's some guys that's not their role. And, you know, Nylander doesn't want to take a penalty. Yeah. And they don't need him to like drop his gloves and start feeding uh no, but it's like a grab a sandwich to a guy, but just it's like grab, grab a guy. guy. Yeah. Take a guy off your captain, you know, just pull him away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think it we're not uh ever gonna expect that from him. So it's kind of uh it is what it is at this point. So I guess in just moving forward in my bracket, let's keep it yeah. in the east because I did finish my entire east side of the bracket. Yeah, yeah, go for it. it. With Tampa winning in seven, Leafs winning in seven, that means that they're going to meet in the second round, and which we're going to have a repeat of last year, Leafs in six. Okay, okay, they'd have home ice, so, yep, you're saying they're going to close it in Tampa again. Yep, repeat. Okay. And then Rangers versus Canes, that'll be a lot more electrifying of a series, you know, both teams are good pretty good offensively defensively in net so rangers in seven that'll be a tough series mm. on okay. home ice they'll close it out and then you're gonna have the most watched playoff series of all time in history rangers leaves yeah what a series that would be uh-huh that would be nice that would be nice that that would have to be a road trip for every leaf fan like i would obviously be very tough to get Tickets, Madison Square Garden. Oh, it's gonna be. It's, it would be. I would have to find expensive. my way there. It would be yeah. the most expensive tickets. Oh go. yeah, it would cost arm and a leg, especially if you're looking at you know hotel stay in New York. Uh, if you're gonna fly as opposed to drive, which based on timing you probably would need to. Um, yeah, that would be a very expensive trip. But if it's a conference final, I think what most Leafs fans can justify. Final. That's yeah. if if the NHL wants to promote the league and get the game to grow. Oh man, Leafs Rangers. Well, I, I think we're spread. past that point of thinking that the NHL cares about making or having the Leafs go far. Clearly, they don't care about that. <laughs> Between the officiating, the suspensions in past playoff uh, games, I don't think they care if we're out early. I think they realize that hockey will sell in Toronto no matter how oh, early yeah. we bow out. A quick yeah. quick question for you based off of suspensions. Uh, which game do you think the first Leaf will get suspended in, and who do you think it will be? Uh, Max Domi, two minutes into game one. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think be... someone's going to take like a shot at Austin Matthews, whether it's DeBrusque, Marshawn, Mac- McAvoy. And I think Domi's going to two-hand them. In the I house. think it, it it's going to be a Domi or Kadri kind of play where it's going to, especially since we're facing the Bruins, it's going to be a Kadri type play where he goes in to make a hit and just some shit happens and he ends up taking a fucking five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could totally see it. I just pray it's not Domi, McCabe, or Benoit. And it's like... Or Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi, if it's well, Revo, I think we all be guy. okay with that. If it's Revo, I'll probably just laugh because it'll, it'll be so funny because it'll be a repeat yeah. of Clifford from a couple of years ago. Yeah, like if, and I don't think they will as we made our predictions already. I don't think they're going to lose to the Bruins, but if they are or if they fall behind in any game or in the series, I just need to know that the Maple Leafs just won't go quietly. Like you got to take something out of the series, if it's not going to be you're winning it, you've got to at least, you know, give the Leaf fans like a shot right to the mug of Brad Marchand or McAvoy. You got to give us something. Yeah. As Leaf fans. Give us Completely something. Agree. Don't don't just walk out off the uh ice in the arena with your tail between your legs. Give us something to at least say, okay, yeah, we we lost in four games, but did you see what Revo did to McAvoy? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna so that would be it- my hope. I'm going to leave it my uh, my East prediction at Rangers Leafs Conference Finals it, until it until it what? comes true. I'm not going to I'm not going to predict on who's going to the finals. I'm not doing that. You're going to leave the 18 people glued to this live here this episode and say I'm not going to make a prediction. I don't know. Well, it's like it would be too obvious if I said who I think is going to win. <laughs> well, I think it. Too, already too yeah. obvious that you've got them in the conference final. People are already <laughs> saying, "Yeah, okay, bud. Okay, yeah, sure." But think of it, <laughs> think of it like this: underdog against the Bruins, 
if it's Florida that advances, then we're the underdogs against Florida. Might be underdogs against Tampa. Who knows? Underdogs against the Rangers. Then underdogs against whoever. Maybe if we were in the finals or not. I don't know. Yeah. Well, in terms of the Eastern Conference matchups, and it probably isn't a big shock, but the Leafs are easily, in terms of the you know lower-seeded teams in all four of these matchups we talked about, like they're the least underdog. I know that's horribly worded, <laughs> but in terms, I guess, looking at it the other way, the Bruins are the lightest favorite in terms of all. No, that, that's a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, the uh, Rangers, biggest favorite amongst the uh, higher-seeded teams there, then Carolina, then Florida, and then it's a pretty uh, big drop-off. The Bruins are only a minus-125 favorite. Yeah, so it's win the coin, series, the coin flip series, yeah. Essentially, right. So yeah, so I'll just do the rest of my brackets. Um, I've got the Leafs winning in six games. Um, I've got Carolina. I like them in five. Um, I think I already did Florida six games and the Rangers. So I would have um, Florida and the Maple Leafs matched up. Um, pains me to do it, but I would have to go Florida. Um, probably in six or seven games, I think will be closer, but I do think Florida would have that edge. And then Carolina in the Rangers, I would have Carolina. Um, that would just really? be an absolute war. Yeah, absolute war, but I would go Carolina. And then I think we might get a oh, repeat, repeat of last year, last year's East final, Carolina and Florida. And on, I would like Florida again, but just to be different and not have them in the final again, give me Carolina goes to the final. Okay. I don't love it because I don't really see Carolina getting all the way there with their goaltending, but I can make more of a case for them over the Rangers, Florida, Boston, or Toronto right now. That's my logic. All right. All right. And quickly, all right. you want to do the West real quick? Yeah, so obviously we can uh, preface it with we don't know who's going to play Edmonton. It's Vegas right now, but if uh, L.A. wins and Vegas loses, um, don't have to worry about all the different uh, tie-breaking options there. But yeah, there's still a chance L.A. could play Edmonton. So I guess I'll kick it off. If it's Edmonton and Vegas, I've got Vegas. If it's Edmonton, L.A., I'm taking Edmonton again um vancouver nashville i know everyone's going to be looking at nashville as potentially um upset the upset everyone's favorite kind of underdog pick i like vancouver there i think they find a way with demco looking to be healthy now yeah um colorado winnipeg really looking forward to that one um i would have had colorado winning easily if they had home ice with winnipeg having home ice now I think it's going to be an absolute dog fight, but mm -hmm. I still like the Avs top guys over Winnipeg in a big um, and meaningful game. So give me the Avalanche. Okay. And then I would uh, definitely be leaning Dallas over LA if that okay. ends up being the matchup. So why don't you give me your first round? Uh, I'm doing, I'm just basing it off of how the standings look now. Cause I think both the Kings and the Knights win tonight. So I don't yeah. think there'll be anything that changes. I have yeah. stars over Kings in six. I feel like the Dallas is just built different. Mm -hmm. They're just they're just a strong team. And I don't I don't like the Kings goaltending situation. Cam Talbot hit or miss. Yep, definitely. Jets abs. I have abs in five. I think if the abs win the first game of the series, it'll be a quick one. If they okay. if, I think it'll be a quick one there. I, I just, the Jets are just, they're a team that'll burn out in playoffs. They don't strike me as, I they rem, I remember last year they burnt out really Alibuck. fast against. Alibuck, right. X Factor potential. Canucks, Preds, you said it. Preds are just such a good upset pick. I can't, I can't let that down. It's a little, it's, yeah, you're going with the Preds? I'm going Preds in seven. Such a chalk pick right now. It's such, <laughs> I think it's everyone such a popular... except Canuck fans are taking them. It's such a popular <laughs> upset pick because the Preds are just playing such good hockey. It's yeah, it's almost like too popular, and that's why I'm taking Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fair, but like Lindholm's been bad. 
since mm-hmm. getting traded there. I do like Demko. I think Demko is really good, but Preds have a lot of quality. They don't have a, like that one. They have Forsberg and Yossi kind of carrying the load offensively, but they have a lot of decent to good offensive players. Like Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan there. O'Reilly. Yeah. Our boy. <laughs> he could very well be who we thought was going to be the X factor last year. And he definitely was not. <laughs> and Oilers, Vegas. I think Vegas is bounced in the first round after defending in their Ooh, okay. cup. I like if it. If you have to face the Oilers, yes. Mm. And that's why I have – it'll be a good series, though, Oilers in seven. Okay. And yeah. from, there, from there, I think uh, it'll be Stars, Avs. Stars will beat the Avs in seven. It'll be a good series, another great so series. Oilers, Preds. Oilers will take advantage of them quick. It'll be a quick series, Oilers in five. Okay. Then Oilers, Stars, Conference Final. So you have Oilers, Stars, Leafs, Rangers in my eyes. That'll be your final four. Nice. Okay. So for me, I, yeah, for assuming Vegas plays Edmonton, I have Vegas there. So then for me, it would then. Really? Be- you're, you're just getting rid of McDavid like that. Wow. Oh, I mean, not like that, but it's not like Vegas didn't beat them last year. And I think their team is. The thing I worry about with Vegas is Aiden Hill. Like their goaltending hasn't looked that great lately. I don't know if he's even 100% healthy. Um, I think they would need the Aiden Hill of last year to probably beat Edmonton again, but I don't know. I, uh, and I'm also hearing Mark Stone might kind of just rise up from the ground and somehow play in game of one. Course. Now. Of course. Yeah. He for sure will. He for sure will. So uh, yeah, I, I like Vegas. I think that defense is going to make it very tough on McDavid. Um, so yeah, I think Vegas finds a way there. And then I think they also beat Vancouver. Um, so I have them going to the conference final again. And then, yeah, I've got Colorado Dallas in there. Um, I think Colorado, I think Colorado and the lean there would be just purely based on McKinnon. I do think when you have great players that perform in the playoffs, that gives you the edge. Um, so yeah, I love Dallas top to bottom. I just don't have enough faith in the. Colorado Georgie goaltending. Georgie yeah I don't know that's why a lot of people are picking against the abs in the first round even totally yeah and it, and it makes sense goaltending yeah it makes sense and it worries me but you know we've seen Colorado win a cup with Kemper you yeah know? so I just think those guys will find a way um I do think obviously whether they're playing Dallas or or Winnipeg they're not going to have the goaltending edge, which might be what kind of pushes them out or eliminates them. But yeah, I just like the idea of, you know, betting on great talent. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I'll take it a step further because I know you wanted to tap out at the conference final round. But for me, I would have um, Colorado beating Vegas. So they're representing the West in the cup. And then um, Colorado, Carolina, Carolina. Yeah. Carolina will win the cup. I I would have Colorado beating Carolina. Okay. Colorado winning Carolina. Like, and I don't even like it. Like even just like saying that. No, (laughs) no, I'm not putting any money on that because it doesn't feel like it will happen. I just, I guess have a little bit of a lean on those teams, Colorado and Carolina. Um, But man, I've got uh, four or five teams that are kind of right in that same tier of uh, potential cup winners. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I I think that there's like five or six teams I could see winning it all. Definitely. It just says a lot about the parity in the league right now. So Is Toronto one of those teams? You don't have to name all them, but is Toronto one of them? Yeah, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you already have them going to the conference final, so you can probably yeah. let the cat out of the bag. They obviously yeah. are for you. I, I like to make I like to make two brackets: one where I have the Leafs winning it all, and then the other mm-hmm. one where I have them yeah, going maybe to the conference final. I don't know. So you have your blind faith bracket, and then your here's what actually will happen. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Fair. That's fair. <laughs> um. 
we're kind of uh, almost at time, but any kind of final thoughts on, um, yeah, heading into game one? Anything uh, you're looking forward to hearing about potential lineup? Anything? Uh, I'm just excited to see Revo confirmed in for game one. That's the one thing I really want to see the most. Revo in That's for the most game important one. for you. Set the tone. Is there Set any the way tone. he wouldn't be? Like, I can't and, see and, it. And sneaky thing I really want, I need Dewar in the lineup. I need that penalty kill kind of working at Me least too. a little bit. So Yeah. I, I worry if Yarncroke, if Yarncroke and McMahon are both in, I worry Dewar won't play. And I'd hate that. I'd hate that. That's why Dewar has to make an impact early. Yeah. Early yeah. On. If he gets a chance to play in game one, um, yeah, he's going to obviously have to be doing everything that Keith might think Yarn Crow could do. Um, Cause yeah, it sounds like I, I, we didn't touch upon this, but uh, Darren Dreger, I heard he had a hit on the radio this morning. He was saying McMahon that that knee injury is probably pretty serious that he's thinking like it's probably middle of round one before we see him. Not Yeah, early. that's what I, that's what I was thinking anyways. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough, middle man. That's tough. It's rough, but I think if he can be back for game five, game six, he can make an impact late in the series. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you just have to hope we're not down 3-1 by that time. <laughs> Uh, and I then I don't think his impact will be that great. <laughs> it's going to be important for the Leafs to take one on the road. You can't come back 100%. to Toronto down 2-0. That's the no. one thing. Hundred. I don't know if they're. it's going to be Saturday, Mondays before we talk. Like, W game one and game two. Yeah. But I think taking game one on the road in Boston will be huge for the Leafs' confidence. Oh, uh. Massive, I mean, massive. Got to have it. Of you can beat these guys. I know you haven't beat them yet this year, but you go into game one, you destroy them in their own yeah. house, and you just set that tone for the series. Maybe Matthews gets one that 70th of the year. I think he's feeling good. Yeah. Just want to see the guys go. Yeah. Like, I think, um, yeah, I think them taking game one would be massive. Um, I think in terms of for myself tempering my expectations because it just seems like the leaves always need a little bit more based on the type of players they have the way they kind of approach the game they always just need that kick in the ass before they kick their game into gear and i just worry like the same things we saw against tampa in game one last year florida in game one last year it's going to be like it's going to be rough to watch them and see like, oh my God, like they're not generating any chances. How are we 10 minutes into the game and we don't have a single shot on goal? Like maybe it's just kind of me, just all the demons of past leaf performances are in my mind right now, but they've got to find a way to shake that. They've just got to come out guns a blazing and maybe them playing on the road versus at home. Perhaps I will help with the nerves a little yeah. bit. Well, we're one and of the better road teams. Quick start. We're one of the better road teams sure. in, the, in the East. So, absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah, man. It's going to be fun. As always, playoff hockey, I don't think anything can match it. So, yeah. definitely looking forward to catching up on Tuesday. Hell yeah. We might have two games in the bag by then. Uh, maybe only one. We'll have to see. Yeah. But it's going to be fun. Awesome. All right, man. Yeah. Enjoy the rest Enjoy of the game week. One. You too. It'll be fun. Let's yeah. go, Leafs, go. Go, Leafs, go. All right, pal. We'll catch up soon. Enjoy the games, guys. We'll talk soon.